Hello again, fellow Beach Bum Traders. Thank you for watching our video on the January barometer, where we will hopefully help you understand what the January barometer is, what does that mean in terms of the performance of the market for the remainder of the year, is it a reliable market predictor, what is the statistical significance and historical significance of the January barometer, and please stick around to the end of the video and we'll provide you with some simple trading strategies and some simple trading ideas of how you can make money trading the January barometer. So again, we hope this all helps you understand what the January barometer is and how you can make money trading uh, the concept of the January barometer. So let's get started. January Barometer The January Barometer is the hypothesis that stock market performance in January, particularly in the U.S., predicts its performance for the rest of the year. So if the stock market rises in January, it is likely to continue to rise by the end of December. The January Barometer was first mentioned by Yale Hirsch in 1972. Historically, if the S&P 500 goes up in January, the trend will follow for the rest of the year. Conversely, if the S&P falls in January, then it will fall for the rest of the year. From 1950 till 1984, both positive and negative prediction had a certainty of about 70% and 90% respectively with 75% in total. After 1985, however, the negative predictive power had been reduced to 50%, or in other words, no predictive power at all. What is the January barometer? The term, January barometer, refers to the belief held by some traders that the investment performance of the S&P 500 index in January can predict its performance for the rest of the year. For example, proponents of this view believe that if the S&P 500 rises between January 1st and January 31st, this will foretell a positive result for the remainder of the year. Similarly, it holds that if the market fares poorly in January, it will likely perform poorly thereafter as well. Key takeaways The January barometer is a market hypothesis stating that returns in January predict those for the rest of the year. It is popular among some traders and was first set out in the Stock Traders Almanac. The January barometer is predominantly a U.S. phenomenon associated with the S&P 500 index. Understanding the January barometer The idea of the January barometer was first devised by Yale Hirsch, creator of the Stock Traders Almanac in 1972. However, it is still used by some traders to this day. Traders who believe in this hypothesis may use it to try and time the market. That is, they may invest in the market only in the years when the barometer predicts that the market will rise and stay out of the market when the barometer forecasts a market pullback. Proponents of this view will cite data showing that the January barometer has registered only 11 errors between 1950 and 2021, giving the indicator an accuracy ratio of 84.5%. However, this phenomenon may be largely illusory. After all, from 1945 to 2021, U.S. equity markets generated a positive annual return roughly 70% of the time. Therefore, the January barometer could just be a secondary effect of the general tendency of U.S. equities to creep higher each year, rather than a special phenomenon that can be used to improve one's market timing. Critics of the January barometer theory will point out that similar phenomena have not been consistently found outside of the United States and therefore that it may be a temporary anomaly specific to U.S. equity markets. Important, the January barometer may have a self-reinforcing character. If U.S. investors react to a strong January by investing more heavily in stocks, then this itself might cause prices to rise. If true, this could explain why the correlation between January and annual market returns is more prevalent in the U.S. than in other regions where the January barometer theory is less well known. Real-world example of the January barometer in recent years, the January barometer has had mixed results. In 2021, the S&P 500 declined by 1.1% in January but went on to gain just under 27% on the year. The results in 2020 were more ambiguous, with the S&P 500 losing 0.16% in January only to go on to a 16% rally throughout the remainder of the year. In 2019, the S&P 500 climbed by 7.87% in January and finished the year up 28.9%. What is the Santa Claus Rally? 
Similar to the January Barometer, the Santa Claus Rally was coined in 1972 by Yale Hirsch, author of the Stock Traders' Almanac. The Santa Claus Rally looks for a rally during a six-session stretch beginning with the first session after Christmas and ending early in the new year. What is a sentiment indicator? A sentiment indicator is designed to provide insight on how a group feels about the market or economy. Economists and investors are always on the lookout for signals of what could occur in the markets or larger economy over the months ahead. The general idea is that market performance will often move in line with public sentiment. Some analysts also believe that recent performance could be used as a gauge for how a group of investors is feeling and would therefore expect the performance to continue. What is seasonality? Seasonality refers to the predictable changes that occur over the course of a year to an economy or business. It is not uncommon for certain times of the year to result in a drastic change in sales for companies within certain sectors. For example, holiday spending is often a major driver of full-year revenue growth for companies within the retail sector. The bottom line the January barometer has demonstrated its staying power as a concept since it was first introduced more than 50 years ago. The statistical debate about whether the indicator is truly a good predictor of the performance of the S&P 500 index will likely continue for decades. Regardless, the start of a new year always presents traders with a fresh opportunity to forecast what could happen over the months ahead, and it doesn't take much of a stretch to expect that indicators such as the January barometer will continue being part of that discussion. What is the January barometer? The term, January barometer, refers to the belief held by some traders that the investment performance of the S&P 500 index in January can predict its performance for the rest of the year. For example, proponents of this view believe that if the S&P 500 rises between January 1st and January 31st, this will foretell a positive result for the remainder of the year. Similarly, it holds that if the market fares poorly in January, it will likely perform poorly thereafter as well. Key takeaways The January barometer is a market hypothesis stating that returns in January predict those for the rest of the year. It is popular among some traders and was first set out in the Stock Traders' Almanac. The January barometer is predominantly a U.S. phenomenon associated with the S&P 500 index. Understanding the January barometer The idea of the January barometer was first devised by Yale Hirsch, creator of the Stock Traders' Almanac in 1972. However, it is still used by some traders to this day. Traders who believe in this hypothesis may use it to try and time the market. That is, they may invest in the market only in the years when the barometer predicts that the market will rise and stay out of the market when the barometer forecasts a market pullback. Proponents of this view will cite data showing that the January barometer has registered only 11 errors between 1950 and 2021, giving the indicator an accuracy ratio of 84.5%. However, this phenomenon may be largely illusory. After all, from 1945 to 2021, U.S. equity markets generated a positive annual return roughly 70% of the time. Therefore, the January barometer could just be a secondary effect of the general tendency of U.S. equities to creep higher each year, rather than a special phenomenon that can be used to improve one's market timing. Critics of the January barometer theory will point out that similar phenomena have not been consistently found outside of the United States and therefore that it may be a temporary anomaly specific to U.S. equity markets. Important, the January barometer may have a self-reinforcing character. If U.S. investors react to a strong January by investing more heavily in stocks, then this itself might cause prices to rise. If true, this could explain why the correlation between January and annual market returns is more prevalent in the U.S. than in other regions where the January barometer theory is less well known. Real-world example of the January barometer in recent years, the January barometer has had mixed results. In 2021, the S&P 500 declined by 1.1% in January but went on to gain just under 27% on the year. The results in 2020 were more ambiguous, with the S&P 500 losing 0.16% in January only to go on to a 16% rally throughout the remainder of the year. In 2019, the S&P 500 climbed by 7.87% in January and finished the year up 28.9%. What is the Santa Claus Rally? Similar to the January barometer, the Santa Claus Rally was coined in 1972 by Yale Hirsch, author of the Stock Traders' Almanac. 
The Santa Claus Rally looks for a rally during a six-session stretch beginning with the first session after Christmas and ending early in the new year. What is a sentiment indicator? A sentiment indicator is designed to provide insight on how a group feels about the market or economy. Economists and investors are always on the lookout for signals of what could occur in the markets or larger economy over the months ahead. The general idea is that market performance will often move in line with public sentiment. Some analysts also believe that recent performance could be used as a gauge for how a group of investors is feeling and would therefore expect the performance to continue. What is seasonality? Seasonality refers to the predictable changes that occur over the course of a year to an economy or business. It is not uncommon for certain times of the year to result in a drastic change in sales for companies within certain sectors. For example, holiday spending is often a major driver of full-year revenue growth for companies within the retail sector. The bottom line the January barometer has demonstrated its staying power as a concept since it was first introduced more than 50 years ago. The statistical debate about whether the indicator is truly a good predictor of the performance of the S&P 500 index will likely continue for decades. Regardless, the start of a new year always presents traders with a fresh opportunity to forecast what could happen over the months ahead, and it doesn't take much of a stretch to expect that indicators such as the January barometer will continue being part of that discussion. What is the January barometer, and is it a reliable market predictor? The January barometer says that if the market performs well in January, it'll perform well for the rest of the year, and vice versa. It's likely that the January barometer has had a good track record, especially when January is positive, because markets have historically trended upward over the long term. Investors who time their investments around the January barometer could face losses and or missed opportunities for gains in the years when it is inaccurate. What is the January barometer? What happens in January, stays in January. Right? Well, not according to some investors who believe that the investment performance of the S&P 500 in January can predict the market's performance for the rest of the year. This phenomenon, known as the January barometer, says that if the market performs well in January, it'll perform well for the rest of the year. On the flip side, if the market performs poorly during the first month of the year, the theory holds that it'll perform poorly during the other 11 as well. Investors who believe in the January barometer might try to time the market, they'll invest only during years that the barometer predicts the market will rise, and they'll exit positions when it forecasts a drawdown. It can be risky to base your investments on this trend. Here's what the data tells us, the January barometer has been accurate 85.7% of the time since 1950, with average gains of 17.6%.1 The track record has been even better in presidential election years, when January had positive returns during an election year, the full year saw gains 100% of the time, with an average S&P 500 return of 16.6%.2 The barometer was most recently correct in 2019, when an 8% gain for the S&P S&P 500 in January was followed by a 28% full-year rally.3 But as the data indicates, the pattern doesn't always hold true. In 2020, the S&P 500 lost 1% in January but still gained 15% over the course of the year. In fact, a down January has not been a reliable predictor of a weak year overall. Interestingly, the theory is broken down into two separate windows of opportunity, the first five days of January, known as the early warning system, and the entire month. The last 45 times that the first five trading days in January had positive gains, the full year return was positive 82.2% of the time, with average gains of 14.3%. There are reasons to take the January barometer with a grain of salt for one, it's likely that the January barometer has such a great track record, especially when January is positive, because markets have historically trended upward over the long term. In other words, momentum is one of the main reasons why the January barometer, and other indicators like it, have credibility. Just remember, U.S. stocks have finished higher in 58 of the 75 years since 1945.5 so, a positive year for the stock market could very well have less to do with January's gains and more to do with directional bias. Additionally, a similar phenomenon has not been found in international markets, so critics argue that the January barometer might be a temporary anomaly specific to U.S. stock markets. That said, research shows that January returns are better predictors of the stock market for the next 12 months than the returns of any other month. 
The bottom line even though the January barometer is often an accurate predictor, investors who time their investments around the theory could face losses and or missed opportunities for gains in the years when it is inaccurate. Historical trends do not guarantee what will happen in the future. Moreover, there are other, more important factors to consider when looking at an investment, including valuations, earnings strength and more. Bottom line, it's best to stay invested for the long term and not let market indicators like the January barometer steer you off track from achieving your long-term goals. The January barometer devised by Yale Hirsch in 1972, the January barometer states that as the S&P 500 goes in January, so goes the year. The indicator has registered 10 major errors since 1950, for an 85.7% accuracy ratio. There are two parts to the January barometer. The first part is the S&P 500 return in the first five trading days of January and its accuracy in predicting the S&P 500 return for the year. The Stock Traders Almanac refers to the first five days as the early warning system. The second part of the January barometer is the S&P 500 return for the month of January and its accuracy in predicting the S&P 500 return for the year. Historical return data for the S&P 500 in the first five days of January as well as annual returns. This is the early warning system. The last 46 times that the first five days had positive returns, the full year return was positive 38 times, for an 82.6% accuracy ratio. The average S&P 500 gain was 14.3% in those years. The second part is the S&P 500 return in January and the accuracy in forecasting the return for the year. In years when the S&P 500 had positive returns in the month of January, the average return for the year was 17.6%. The indicator has registered 10 major errors since 1950, for an 85.7% accuracy ratio. Conclusion, the last 45 times that the first 5 days have been positive early warning system, the full year return was positive 82.2% of the time, with average gains of 14.3% in those years. Since 1950, in years when the S&P 500 had positive returns in the month of January, the full year was positive 85.7% of the time, with average gains of 17.6%. January barometer One of the most discussed seasonal anomalies is the January barometer. January barometer is a calendar anomaly that says that equity index returns from February to December could be forecasted by the January performance of the particular equity index. The theory says that a strong January should predict the strong performance of the whole year and vice versa. Although statistics says that the average market return over the 11 months was significantly higher following January in which the market return was positive compared to the average market return over the 11 months following January in which the market return was negative, this strategy should be taken with caution. While the January barometer should contain valuable information, however it may be just a data mining, the January barometer would have led an investor to be long the market during four of the five worst 11-month post-January intervals over the 152 years long backtesting period. Moreover, this simple long-short strategy would also lead the investor into disastrous short trades during bull markets. The aforementioned negative outcomes could be partially eliminated by the usage of a long position in the equity index combined with the bonds. However, it is still questionable whether the strategy is rationally based or is the product of the upward trend of equities for a long time. However, according to the paper, the best usage of this barometer is the combination of equity index and treasury bonds with a simple rule to buy index after a strong January or to buy bonds after weak January. The strategy mentioned above should outperform passive long-only strategy through the whole backtesting period, the long-short strategy according to January's, and the long-leg-only of the January barometer strategy. Fundamental reason The fundamental reasons for the persistence of this anomaly in the future are very weak, and any rational explanation cannot be found. However, the whole anomaly is probably only a consequence of data mining. Additionally, the spread between the market timing using the January barometer and passive investment in the equity market is so small that it is probably not interesting, or wise, to pursue this strategy. 
On the other hand, there is a large amount of research that does not support this strategy, for example, Huang, real-time profitability of published anomalies, an out-of-sample test, the other January effect, OJE, which suggests positive-negative equity market returns in January predict positive-negative returns in the following 11 months of the year, does not outperform a buy-and-hold approach in the U.S. equity market and therefore adds no value to market timers. There is also no evidence of the OJE working consistently on individual stocks or international markets. Or the work of Marshall and Vassal Tanachoti, the other January effect, evidence against market efficiency, the other January effect, OJE, which suggests positive-negative equity market returns in January predict positive-negative returns in the following 11 months of the year, underperforms a simple buy-and-hold strategy before and after risk adjustment. Even the best modified OJE strategy, which benefits from several ex-post adjustments, does not generate statistically or economically significant excess returns. Last but not least, Stivers, Sun and Sun in their work, the other January effect, international, style, and subperiod evidence state that, our evidence indicates that the OJE is primarily a U.S. market-level based phenomenon that has diminished over time, which suggests a backquote temporary anomaly interpretation. Therefore, this strategy should be considered with caution or maybe not traded at all, although the popular press tends to like it. What is the January barometer? The January barometer is the idea that the investment performance of the S&P 500 in the month of January is representative of the predicted performance of the entire year. For example, if the month of January yields positive momentum, it is said that the remainder of the year will rise as well. The opposite versa is also true. If the market performs poorly in January, it is said that the remainder of the year will do the same. The concept of the January barometer stemmed from a 1967 novel called, Stock Traders' Almanac by Yale Hirsch. It continues to be present in many people's trading strategies. Summary The January barometer is a market theory that is considered a forward-looking indicator of an index's annualized returns based on the momentum illustrated in the respective month of January. The January barometer was first mentioned in Stock Traders' Almanac by Yale Hirsch, which was published in 1967. The concept is best associated with the S&P 500 index and may not necessarily be as good of an indicator on any other indices, especially equities that are not from the U.S. Understanding the January barometer traders who believe in the theory may utilize the results to forecast and time the market. Particularly, as an indicator, they may only invest in the market during times that January is up and avoid it when the month's returns are down. It is most often connected to U.S. equities, particularly focusing on the S&P 500. Such a belief stems from the correlation found in data the S&P 500 predicted and actual returns between 1966 to 2001. In fact, dating back to 1928, the S&P 500 was tested 91 times to determine whether there was a correlation between their annualized and respective January months. It appeared that on those 91 occasions, the market indeed ended the year in a similar direction as the month of January 63 times. However, it is important to be aware that the phenomenon may be coincidental, as positive returns also occurred 75% of the time within the U.S. equity markets. Thus, the strategy may not necessarily improve one's market timing. Recent example in 2017, the S&P 500 gained 2% in the month of January. Following afterward, the remaining months generated an annualized return of 19%, resulting in an upwards trend. Understanding the January barometer traders who believe in the theory may utilize the results to forecast and time the market. Particularly, as an indicator, they may only invest in the market during times that January is up and avoid it when the month's returns are down. It is most often connected to U.S. equities, particularly focusing on the S&P 500. Such a belief stems from the correlation found in data the S&P 500 predicted and actual returns between 1966 to 2001. In fact, dating back to 1928, the S&P 500 was tested 91 times to determine whether there was a correlation between their annualized and respective January months. It appeared that on those 91 occasions, the market indeed ended the year in a similar direction as the month of January 63 times. However, it is important to be aware that the phenomenon may be coincidental, as positive returns also occurred 75% of the time within the U.S. equity markets. 
Thus, the strategy may not necessarily improve one's market timing. Recent example in 2017, the S&P 500 gained 2% in the month of January. Following afterward, the remaining months generated an annualized return of 19%, resulting in an upwards trend. Problems with the January barometer There are two major problems with using the January barometer, the track record of success forecasts just below 70% of the time. There is the assumption that investors continue to hold despite the index's drawdown. Although the success rate is fairly high, it is important for investors to understand that using the January barometer as an indicator should be taken with a grain of salt, as opposed to a trading principle. It is best used to gain insight into the overall market's health. By doing so, one can maintain a bullish perspective and gain confidence throughout the trading year when January yields positive momentum. Debunking Myths of the January Barometer Mark Hulbert, the editor of the Hulbert Financial Digest, believes the January barometer is ineffective. He states that the stock market rises two-thirds of the time, regardless of January's performance, which ultimately makes the theory null. Hulbert also disagrees with the point that if the market falls in January, the remaining 11 months should also fall. Hulbert looked at the returns of the Dow Jones Industrial Average DJIA, from 1897 through 2008. He found that when the Dow fell in January, its average monthly return for the remaining months was 0.25%. Rather, it's been mentioned that market performance in December is a better predictor of the subsequent 11 months as opposed to January, while November is the third most accurate predictor. The three months with no predictive ability at all are February, August, and September. However, it is best to remember that the January barometer is most effective with the S&P 500, not the DJIA. Thank you for watching our video on the January barometer to the end. We hope that this video has helped you understand what the January barometer is, whether it is a good, reliable indicator of the performance of the market for the rest of the year, and also hopefully we provided you with some simple trading strategies and some simple trading ideas of how you can make money trading uh, based on the concept of the January barometer and the remainder of the trading year based on the information provided by the January barometer. So we hope this all helps. Please let us know what you think about this concept of the January barometer, whether you think it's a, a real indicator of the performance of the market for the remainder of the year or not, why or why not, in the comments below, in our free Discord, in our Facebook group, uh, via any of our social media profiles, all of which you should be able to find links to in the description below box below. So again, let us know what you think about all of this relative to the January barometer. And if you feel that it's a good indicator of how the market's going to perform for the rest of the year and why or why not. Again, we hope this all helps and good luck and have a great trading year. The content of this video was produced by Beach Bum Trading. We hope you will choose to also join us in the Beach Bum Trading community and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Visit us at our homepage at beachbumtrading.com, the bum without the U. Similarly on Twitter, Beach Bum Trading, bum without the U. On Facebook and in our Beach Bum Trading Facebook group. Please follow us on Pinterest and on Instagram. All of the links to our social media sites will be included in the description box below and we hope you will choose to subscribe to our Beach Bum Trading YouTube channel and follow us on social media. Thank you. We also cordially want to invite you to our new Beach Bum Trading Community Discord server where we can have discussions on all topics related to trading, success in trading, investing, etc. You can see uh, alerts when we make trades, changes to our watch list, etc. So again, please join us in the new Beach Bump Trading Community Discord server. You should be able to find a link in the description box below. You can also find a link in the social media category on our web page beachbumtrading.com without the bum without the u and also in the link section on the about page of our youtube
channel, etc. So again, we look forward to seeing you in the Beach Bump Trading Community Discord server soon. Wave and say hello. Beach Bump Trading also now has a site on Patreon. If you are willing and able to help support our efforts to uh, produce all the content and help you achieve the financial freedom you want and deserve to be able to leave, live the Beach Bum lifestyle or any other kind of lifestyle you would like and you're willing and able to help support our efforts in these regards, uh, we hope you'll choose to visit our Patreon page. Uh, you can get access to our new uh, Beach Bum Trading Community Discord server, which is currently under construction. But you will get access to the Discord server by supporting us through Patreon. Again, this is all currently under construction, but you can see we just have the default uh, levels, membership levels. But again, each level allows support, uh, allows access to our Discord. Um, we're also posting our trade um, trade positions initially in our Discord. And again, we greatly appreciate uh, any support that you're willing and able to provide. So, thank you for your consideration. Another way that you can help support Beach Bum Trading in being able to produce frequent quality content for you, for free, on YouTube, etc., is in addition to subscribing to our Beach Bum Trading channel, hitting the like button on our videos, and hitting the notify so you're alerted when we release further videos. You can also choose to support, show your support for Beach Bum Trading with a super thanks, which you can find below this video. If you hit the heart with the dollar sign, the super thanks, again, you can financially support Beach Bum Trading in whatever amount that you wish. And we greatly appreciate your support. And that will help us again be able to produce frequent quality content that we can provide for you and all your fellow Beach Bum traders around the world for free on YouTube. So again, we greatly appreciate all of your support and thank you very much. Thank you again for watching our video. We hope that you liked it. If so, please smash the like button, give us a thumbs up. If you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing to our Beach Bum Trading YouTube channel. Please share this video with your fellow traders and friends. And please give us your feedback and any recommendations for improvement in the comment section below. And let us know what else we can do to help you in your trading career. Thank you again. Good luck and have a great trading day. If you like this video, we hope you will choose to subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking on the box in the upper left hand corner. You can watch another video like this by clicking on the box in the lower right hand corner. And we have a whole playlist of videos like this that you can access via the box in the upper right hand corner. Our latest video is available in the box in the lower left hand corner. We hope you like this and have a great day.